I'm glad I got my support system sitting right here in front of me. That means the pressure is on. <laughs> Amen. It's all right when you're sitting on the side, but when you're sitting right in front of your face, it's something else, huh? Amen. Amen. But God is with me. Yes. Amen. Amen. Yes. God is with me. Amen. I'm glad this message, I'm glad to share this message with you this morning. Amen. Because the, the praise that's been going on in this house has, he, Pastor has confirmed it on last week's worship, amen, which was awesome, amen, our Thursday night Bible study where we studied where the topic of consideration for Thursday was the birth of praise, amen, amen with Leah and Rachel, and we knew, we saw that um, until your eyes are open, um, my circumstances can change immediately, amen. amen, and that's what we learned concerning Leah, until she opened up her mouth, and praise God that her circumstances began to change immediately. Amen? Amen. 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 So I just wanted to give you these little tidbits before I even go into the message. Amen. Well, anyway, my subject for consideration this morning is there's power in your praise. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. So I just wanted to let you know that God is not moved by the natural tears that we cry and how we get emotional. God is not moved by that. I'm just going to tell you all that for the umpteen times. That's cute how you do that because you know that's part of emotion, but that does not move God on your behalf. Right. Amen. He doesn't move on your tears. Amen. 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 God will always move on your praise. Yes. Amen. God is not moved. He wants, you know what God wants? He wants a supernatural praise to get his attention. Yes. Amen. So we know that when you praise him, you're going to a different atmosphere. You're going to a different stratosphere. Amen. And that's when you know that God is really moving because that's when you forget all about yourself. Amen. That's when you forget about the head. You forget about the lashes. When you really, like Pastor said, when you really, really, really go in. Yes. Amen. You don't care what you look like to Amen. nobody else. Amen. Amen. I know, you know, we all try to be cute when we praise and praise the Lord, you know, because we want to look like something when we leave out of here. But God said he's not impressed with your look in your fashions. God says he wants a real praise, amen, to come out of your mouth, amen. So your praise will turn your situation around, amen. And we know that awesome things happen when people praise God, and that's when God gets involved and things start to happen, amen. Now, listen, right, listen to this design. God's power is released. When you praise, that means your situations, your circumstances, your battles, whatever it is, when you open up your mouth, something is bound to happen. Amen. We're going to go to Second Chronicles 21 to 27. Who got the message for me? Let's go. I need somebody to read it in a nice, loud voice. Tawana, go ahead. Second Chronicles 20, verse 1 to 27. You have it, Minister Shea? Okay, read it for me. Stand up and read it in a nice, loud voice. In the message? Yes. Here begins the reading of God's holy word. Sometime later, the Moabites and the Ammonites, accompanied by the Minuites, joined forces to make war on Jehoshaphat. Jehoshaphat received this intelligence report. A huge force is on its way from beyond the Dead Sea to fight you. There's no time to waste. They're ready at Hazan Tamar, the oasis of En Gidea. Shaken, Jehoshaphat prayed. He went to God for help and ordered a nationwide fast. The country of Judah united in seeking God's help. They came from all cities of Judah to pray to God. Mm -hmm. Then Jehoshaphat took a position before the assembled people of Judah mm -hmm. and Jerusalem at the temple of God in front of the new courtyard and said, O oh God, God of our ancestors, are you not God in heaven above and the ruler of all kingdoms below? Mm -hmm. You hold all power and might in your fist. No one stands a chance against you. Mm -hmm. And didn't you make the natives of this land leave as you brought your people Israel in, turning it over permanently to your people Israel, the descendants of Abraham, your friend? Mm -hmm. They have lived here and built a holy house of worship to honor you saying, when the worst happens, whether war or flood or disease or famine, mm -hmm. and we take our place before this temple, mm. we know you are personally present in mm. this place right. mm. and pray out our pain okay. and trouble. Mm. We know that you will listen and give victory. Mm -hmm. And now it happened, men from Amnon, Moab, and Mount Sire have shown up. 
You didn't let Israel touch them when we got here at first. We detoured around them and didn't lay hands on them. Mm -hmm. And now they've come to kick us out of the country you gave us. Oh, dear God, won't you take care of them? We're helpless before this vandal horde ready to attack us. Mm -hmm. We don't know what to do. We are looking to you. Mm -hmm. Everyone in Judah was there, little children, wives, sons, all present and attentive to God. Then Jehaziel was moved by the Spirit of God to speak from the midst of the congregation. Jehaziel was the son of Zechariah, the son of Benaiah, the son of Jael, the son of Mataniah, the Levite of Aspeth clan. He said, attention everyone, all of you from out of town, all of you from Jerusalem, and you King Jehoshaphat. God's word, don't be afraid. Don't pay any mind to this vandal horde. This is God's war, not yours. Tomorrow you will go after them. See, they're ready on their way up from the slopes of Ziz. Mm -hmm. You'll meet them at the end of Ravan, near the wilderness of Jeruel. You won't have to lift a hand in this battle. Right. Just stand firm. Uh -huh. Judah and Jerusalem, and watch God's saving work for you yes, take God. shape. Mm -hmm. Don't be afraid. Right. Don't waver. March out boldly mm -hmm. tomorrow. God is with you. Mm -hmm. Then Jehoshaphat knelt down, bowing his face to the ground. Yes, All yes. Judah and Jerusalem did the same, worshiping God. The Levites, both Kahithites and Korites, stood to their feet to praise God, the God of Israel. They praised, they praised at the top of their lungs. They were up early in the morning, ready to march into the wilderness of Tanoka. As they were leaving, Jehoshaphat stood up and said, Listen, Judah and Jerusalem, listen to what I have to say. Believe firmly in your God. Your God and your lives will be firm. Mm -hmm. Believe yes. in your prophets and you mm -hmm. will come out on mm -hmm. top. All right. After talking it over with the people, Jehoshaphat appointed a choir for God, mm -hmm. dressed in holy robes. Yes. They were to march ahead of the troops mm -hmm. singing, Give thanks to God, his love mm -hmm. never quits. Yeah. As soon as they started shouting and praising, God set ambushes against mm. the men of Abnon, Moab, and Mount Sir, as they were attacking Judah, and they all ended up dead. Mm. The Ammonites and the Moabites mistakenly attacked those from Mount Sir mm -hmm. and massacred them. Yeah. Then further confused, they went at each other, and they mm -hmm. all ended up killed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. As Judah came up over the rise, looking into the wilderness for the horde of barbarians, they looked on a, a killing field of dead bodies, mm -hmm. not a living soul among them. Mm -hmm. When Jehoshaphat and his people came to carry off the plunder, they found more loot than they could carry off, yes. equipment, clothing, yes. valuables. It took three days to mm -hmm. cart it away. Mm -hmm. On the fourth day, they came together at the Valley of Blessings, Baraka, and bless God. That's how it got the name Valley of Blessings. Jesus. Amen. 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 All right, so you see, what was the key word there? They praised God and a breakthrough happened. Amen. They didn't even have to lift the hand. God said, no, just stand still. Just stand still. Okay, so we know that a good king named Jehoshaphat was in trouble, amen? And war came up against him, amen, by three armies, just summarizing everything. And they prayed, and God answered them, and he told them that, that the battle was his. H-I-S, not yours, Y-O-U-R-S, amen? It's God's and not yours, and that you won't even have to fight or lift a finger, amen? The king assigned the praises. Again, I'm going to say the praises. He assigned the praises to march ahead of the army, and as they prayed, amen, in verse 22, God made the armies start fighting amongst themselves, amen, and they killed each other off, amen? When the king Jehoshaphat got there, all he saw was dead bodies, and they were there three days collecting all the valuables. Praising God got God involved, amen, and made King Jehoshaphat and his army win. So remember, that man, they, they never cried, amen? They never said, woe is me, all these people coming up against us, and we got, no, what did he do? He opened up his mouth, and he gave God a praise, amen? I just want to get started, amen? So he appointed a choir, amen, for God. He dressed them, like he said, in a holy robe, and they marched around, amen? Amen, so this is what he said, give thanks to God.
God, but his love never quits. Amen? Amen. So as soon as they started shouting and praying, God sets ambushes against the three armies of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir. Amen? And everything, everybody was defeated. Everybody was killed off. Amen? So when you start to praise God, some, some, some things start to happen suddenly. Amen? I don't care how big the situation is. I don't care what's going on. As long as you got a mouth to praise him, God can do anything for you. I'm just getting started. Hold up. We're going to Jonah. Here's another story. Jonah chapter 1 verses. Well, we're going to, I'm just going to, because we're not going to read the whole thing. Amen? Amen. But I'm going to tell you where to go. Finally, Jonah chapter 2, 9 through 10. Y'all know Jonah. He was disobedient and he ran from God. Amen? Amen. And that's when he got on the ship and the ship went through this crazy sea. Amen. And they was like, well, what did you do? Amen. What did you do? And they, you know, they said, well, you might you had to do something. Amen. What did you do? And what God do you serve? Because something ain't right. Amen. Amen. Something is not right. Amen. Amen. So here we go. This man didn't want to obey God. That's the first thing. That was his first mistake. And he ran. Then he got swallowed up by, the, by a huge fish. Uh -huh. Amen. And Jonah chapter 2. Well, this go. let me see. Yeah, go to two, um, Jonah 2, 9 and 10. Yeah, what was he doing after he got swallowed up in the belly? Mm-hmm. Because God will bring you into a place where you have no other choice yes, yes, but to yes, praise yes, him. Yes, yes, yes. Amen. Those who worship hollow gods, God frauds, walk away their only true love. But I'll, I'm worshiping you, God, mm -hmm. calling out in thanksgiving. And all, all I'll do, what I promised I'll do. Salvation belongs to God. Then God spoke to the fish and it vomited up Jonah on the sea. Wow. There you go. He opened up his mouth again. And he gave first he prayed and he gave God the praise. Amen. And that's when the God God spoke again and the fish sped him out and, and went on the seashore someplace and landed someplace. Amen. Amen. So that's what he did. Amen. Another story we're gonna go to Act 16. 16, 16. This is a story about Paul and Silas. Amen. Come on, y'all. Amen. Paul and Silas. This is all about praise this morning. Amen. Amen. One day on our way to the place of prayer, a slave girl ran onto us. Mm -hmm. She was a psychic and for her fortune telling, making a lot of money for the people who owned her. Yeah. She started following Paul around, calling everyone's attention to us by yelling out, these men are working for the most high God. Mm -hmm. They're laying out the road for salvation for you. She did this for a number of days until Paul finally fed up with her, turned, and commanded the spirit that possessed her out in the name of Jesus Christ. Get out of her. And it was gone just like that. Amen. All right, what you, right, you read? You ready for Acts 16, 16 to 25. 25. Yes. When her, owner, when her owner saw that their lucrative little business was suddenly bankrupt, they went after Paul and Silas, roughed them up, and dragged them into the market square. Then the police arrested them and pulled them into the court with accusations. These men are disturbing the peace. Dangerous Jews, alligators, um, subverters of Roman law and order. By this time, the crowd had turned into a restless mob out for blood. You said the 24? 25. 25. Then the judges went along with the mob, with the mob had Paul and Silas clothes ripped off and ordered a public beating. After beating them black and blue, mm -hmm. they threw them into jail, right. telling the jailkeeper to put them under heavy guard so there would be no chance of escape. Right. He did just that, throwing them in the maximum security cell at the jail and clamped yeah. leg irons on them. Mm -hmm. Along about midnight, Paul and Silas were in prayer and singing a robust hymn to God. Right. The order, the other pr um, prisoners couldn't believe their ears. Then without warning, a huge earthquake. The jailhouse shook. Every door flew open, all the prisoners were loose. Amen, amen. And come on, y'all, put that again. It was praise that got him out of that situation, amen. Paul and Silas was put in the jail unjustly, amen? amen. So we know at midnight, verse 25, they were praising God and singing, amen. And without warning, that huge earthquake came over, opened the stocks, and let all the prisoners loose, amen. amen. So you, we know that they were under maximum security, amen. amen. So that there was no chance for escaping, amen. And they were praising God because they knew the strength that comes when they praise God, amen. amen. So do you think that they felt like praising God? No, I wouldn't. Amen. They could have been complaining. They could have been murmuring. Remember, they was beat up. They was black and blue. Who wants to sing when you're black and blue and beat up? Amen. 
but they knew the power of praise in their mouth. They knew that the God they served was going to come soon as they opened up their mouth. So this is what they did. And I just want to say, but praise in hard times is what, is, 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 is what gets God's attention. Amen? Amen? That's what we should do. We knew the power of praise. And we know how to get God's attention. And they knew that God would do something on their behalf. Amen. So when you praise God, God comes very close to you. It says in Psalms 22 verse 3, it says, But thou art holy, O thou that, that inhabitest the praises of Israel. When we, when, when we inhabit a place, what does that mean? All right, I'm going to tell you what that means. That where we, that's where we live. Amen. And that's where we get to customize it. That's where the presence is. Amen. That's where we can make it our own. And that's where we can reflect our personality. Amen. This is what the Lord does with our praise. Amen. Amen. He moves in. Amen. Amen. He, he makes it his own. God inhabits the praises of his people. Amen. Who is his people? His people are is everyone here. Amen. Amen. God's spirit is in each of us. Amen. Let's read 1 John 4, 15 and 16. He promised he'd never leave us. Amen? Amen. I'm just giving y'all some tidbits before I, before I do what I have to do. I just want to give y'all a word first. Everyone who confesses that Jesus is son's, God's son mm -hmm. participates continuously in his intimate relationship with God. We know it so well, we embrace the heart and soul, this love that comes from God. Amen. God is love, and when we take up permanent residence in a life of love, we live in God, and God lives in us. Hebrews 13, 5 and 6. Don't be, don't be obsessed with getting more material things. Be relaxed with what we have. Amen? Amen. Since God assured us, I'll never let you down. Never walk off. And that's what he said. I'll never walk off, and I'll never leave you. Amen. So why are we always acting like God left us when we go through our little pity parties? Amen. God is able to do everything. Amen? Amen. God is able to do everything that he said. God is there. God is always ready to help. Because, and you should be fearless in that. Amen? Amen? Who am I to be scared of? What am I to be scared of? God is everything. God is all of that. Who can do anything to God? What enemies can come against me when I got God? My daddy by my side. Amen? Come on, y'all. Never act like y'all fighting. So how can you imagine he feels when we are tense and worried? All right. Ephesians 4.30. It says, don't grieve God. Don't break his heart. His Holy Spirit moving and breathing in you is the most intimate part of your life, making you fit for himself. Don't take such a gift for granted. Now, can you imagine how he feels every time that you all tense and you worry about what well, God don't feel happy with you like that. Uh -huh. That grieves, he, he does not like for his children. And, and, and this is where Bible right here, Ephesians. Anytime you feel intense and worrisome, read Ephesians 4.30. God does not like, God likes it when you praise him. God likes it when you, you know, when you exalt him. God likes it when you just say that he's all of that. Because he knows that he's all of that and can't nobody take his place. Amen? So you want to make God feel right at home because, amen, he dwells inside of you. Amen? amen. All right, now I'm about to go somewhere else. I'm going to go now because, now maybe that wasn't enough because, you know, so now I'm going to get a little deeper for you deep people. <laughs> I need to get a scoop again now for y'all. Amen. Here we go. Picture you are not able to stop talking because your conversations are linked up. All right. No breathing. All right. I say this. Your conversations have to be linked up to God. That means your praises have to be linked up to God. Mm -hmm. Amen. I was, I was, as I was listening to Prophet talking in the um, class on Friday, I was like, was he looking at my dog or notes? You know, and, and I think I asked him that yesterday too when I was writing. I said, you ain't looking at my stuff. But I know that that's just God confirming, amen, that it's not me saying what I want to say, man, that he's just, he's just confirming, amen. So I, I, I mean, I thank God for that, amen. But, and I'm going here, I'm going this way. Picture you are not able to stop talking because your conversations are linked up. What does that mean? Praising anyhow, amen. Your conversation after conversation, speaking of God's glory and how he made a way out of no way. Amen. That's your conversations linked up. That's your praises to God's ears, amen. When you have a good praise of God, God loves to hear that. God loves to hear that you got to praise for him each and every time you open up your mouth, amen. And let me see, okay, I'm just going to go this way. And this is what God is telling me. The Lord says when you praise God, it's going to get on his heels. All right. Okay, Acts 7, 49. And I think this will make you understand it even more. Okay. 
Yet that doesn't mean that the Most High God lives in a building made by carpenters and masons. The prophet Isaiah put, puts it well when he wrote, Heaven is my throne. Yes. I rest my feet on earth. Right. Yeah. So what kind of house would you build me? Says God. Right. Where I where I can get away and relax. It's already built and I built it. Huh. Heaven is my throne. That means I'm not homeless. Yes. Amen. Earth is my footstool. I put my foot on earth. Amen. Yes. Amen. And I put my people on earth that I created. So if you, if you live on earth and if we all begin to praise God hard, when the praises of God go up, the first place is going to touch is his feet. Yes. All right, y'all. I said the first place. That should be excited because we're not praising. The first place is going to touch his feet. Now, if his feet are sensitive, he must get off his throne to take care of you. Yeah. He must get off his throne to take care of your need in every situation. So when God's foot becomes sensitive to my praise, he got to get up and take care of his daughter. Yeah. Amen. Now listen closely. This is what happens with a baby. I'm just going to use my, my God goes back. For instance, when Shayla cries, amen, a mother knows the cry of her child. Amen. She knows when she's fussy. Amen. She knows when she got gas. She knows when her pamper changed. She knows when she's hungry. Amen. There's different cries that cry. But a mother knows when it's time for her to get out. A mother can actually avoid or, or not even pay attention to a baby when, start, when, when she starts crying at first because she knows she just wants a little bit of attention. Yeah. But a mother knows when now she's acting up, now I got to get up, now she done, no, she done cried long enough, now it's time for me to move on my daughter's behalf. Okay. Amen? So that's a, I just want to say that, so that's a good um, thing for baby, amen, amen, illustration of how God moves, amen? amen. When you, when, 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 I mean, when you keep on praising, hallelujah, you're worthy, God, I bless your name, God. You are holy in everything that to do. There is none before you. God is sitting here, he'll be like this, all right? She's talking. I got to get up now. What she want? What my daughter wants? She wants something from me. I got to move on her behalf. Amen? So I know when I, when I tickle God with my praise, something has got to happen because I know that God puts up his very sense to my needs and my wants. Amen? All right. I just want to say this. So now listen closely. The reason why some of you are still in the same season is because God's not feeling the praises enough to move them. All right. All right. Some of you are like, praise him, praise him, praise him. Pastor, I mean, we're going in hard. The praises are going up and down, and all you're doing is praise him, praise him, praise him. You're doing something else, but you're not, you're not involved. And you're, not, you're, not, you're not making yourself available. Your daddy doesn't know your cry because your voice is too low. And this is what I told him about with Pastor. The frequency is not going up into the heavens. It's not reaching up. We get HD in our Apple's TV, 65 in, and you are a black and white 12 with only 2, 4, 7, and 11. Go up, you stand around, you look around, and you say, I'm praising God in my mind. That's what 
y'all say sometimes, oh, I'm praising him, but I'm praising him. Whatever I pray, I'm praising him in my mind. Don't worry, guys, I'm praising him. No, God says he wants to hear off your lips. He wants us to roll off your tongue, daughter, and give me the praises. Amen? Yes, God. Problem with us is too many of us got God on our minds and not on our lips. Amen? Amen. Amen. So when the praise enters your mouth, there should be an overflow each and every time. No matter what's going on, it should be an overflow of praise. Children acting up, overflow of praise. Husband acting up, overflow of praise. Right. You know what I mean? When you lie on, overflow of praise. Right. When you're cheated on, overflow of praise. Right. When I'm talked about, overflow of praise. Amen. I will bless the Lord at all times. Amen. Amen. So I just want to thank you guys in closing. I just want to say any situation that gets hard. Amen. Zion, you know what to do. Just praise the Lord in advance. Amen. And he'll do it for you. I hope you are blessed. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you. I have some